Hi, it's Mitch from PickDogs.com, Thursday, May 23rd, 2024, here with today's first halves and first five innings. The way this video works, we go over the day's card, we give out all the first halves, today, of course, just one NBA game, and then all the first five innings for Major League Baseball. As we move into the fall with football and basketball, of course, these videos, some of them might get quite long, some of them, we're going to have to crop down the games, especially in college basketball, we're not going to have 250 uh, first halves on a college basketball Saturday. Saturday. What we're always going to do in these videos, though, is do a quick second. We're going to say something that happened on this date in history or a famous first on this date in history. And today, uh, Eminem released the Marshall Mathers uh, LP. That was in the year 2000. So uh, that's what happened on this date in history. But anyways, what's also going to happen in this date in history, we're going to crush the books, killing those first halves and first five innings like we have been. Anyways, let's start getting to the picks. For our first pick of today's show, we're going to go to the Eastern Conference Finals where the Celtics are hosting the Pacers for Game 2. What a thriller Game 1 was, and the Pacers have to be kicking themselves. All they had to do was in inbound the ball, and they would have had a 1-0 series lead and really stolen home court advantage from the Celtics. But I don't expect the Pacers to lay down here because they have shown that they can play with this Celtics team. In fact, they've shown that they can play with everybody. When we look at the first halves for these two teams, Celtics um, have covered the first half spread in 64 of their 96 games um, for a 24% ROI. And then meanwhile, though, the Pacers have hit the first half money line in 22 of their last 31 games. 25% ROI on that. That is astounding. I got to say that I think that this one is going to be a knockdown drag out. I think that the Pacers, like what we saw in Game 7 against the Knicks, where a lot of people counted them out, I think they fire back here. We'll take the Pacers first half on the money line as pick one. We head to Major League Baseball where the Pirates are taking on the Giants. It's Paul Skeens, the phenom, on the mound for the Pirates. And it is Mason Black on the mound for the for the Giants. You know, the Giants got the best of the Pirates on Wednesday, even in Blake Snell's start where a lot of people were doubting them. But we know one thing about Skeens for the Pirates. He is absolutely phenomenal. Just think about it, if the Pirates would have held their pitchers together that they've traded away in recent years. Glass now, Cole, Skeens, what a staff it would be. But, of course, that's not the staff that they have right now. On the other side of it is Mason Black for the Giants. He's been hit pretty hard this season. And I expect with Skeens on the mound, just, you know, when you have a pitcher that's electric like that, generally it just brings up the beat of the whole roster. The Pirates haven't been all that strong this season. I think the Giants are the better team in this game. I just don't think they can get to Skeens. I'm going to take the Pirates as a first five, and that's going to be my pick for this game. For our next game, we head to Yankee Stadium, where the Yankees are taking on the Seattle Mariners. It's heel on the mound for the Yankees, and it is Luis Castillo on the mound for the Mariners. Of course, Castillo always pitches against the other team's number one, and that's why he's one of the hard luck pitchers of baseball. He's got a 3.28 ERA on the season, 2.89 over his last three games, but he's up against heel, who's got a 2.39 ERA for the season and one point and one even for his uh, last three games. The thing about this is that both of these teams, and if you look at their last 10 games, are absolutely crushing right-handed pitching with the Mariners at 264 versus righties through their last 10 and the Yankees at, 250, at, at 282 versus Yankees over their last 10. But if you look across the season, the Yankees have been far more consistent, 256 versus righties across the season at 228 for the Mariners. You know, Luis Castillo, just a tough luck loser usually. I'm going to roll with the Yankees in this one, and that'll be our pick for this game. Now we head to Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, where the Phillies are closing out their series against the Texas Rangers. It's been all Phillies in this series. They send Zach Wheeler to the mound for this one against Andrew Heaney for the Rangers. The thing about Wheeler is, is that we know that like, um, you know, he's he's been one of the tough luck, kind of like Castillo from the last game, one of the tough luck losers in baseball. He's always up against the other team's number one, but not the case here going up against Heaney. 
The thing is, when you look at their recent starts, Wheeler has a 3.93 ERA in his last three, while Heaney just 3.07. But most of the damage that happened to Wheeler happened in just one game. When you look at the Phillies versus left-handed pitching, hitting just 214 over their last 10 games, even though they've been hitting 261 versus lefties over the course of the season. And for the Rangers, 197 versus righties compared to 249 for the season. Both these teams really regressing against these type of pitching. I like the under in the Phillies Rangers, and that'll be our pick for this game. For our next game, we head to Cincinnati where the Reds are hosting the Padres. Frankie Montas gets the ball for the Reds, and it's Matt Waldron on the mound for the Padres. Boy, you know, yesterday's game when we gave out the over for the first five, it looked a little dicey, but boy, they got to that fifth inning and the Padres just absolutely unloaded with the runs. Today, I don't think we have to wait quite so long because the Padres absolutely crushing right-handed pitching over the course of the season, 272 versus righties and 290 versus righties over their last 10 games. Meanwhile, we look at the Reds, just 209 versus right-handed pitching for the season, 203 over their last 10 games. You look at the pitching, and yeah, Waldron has a 6.43 ERA over his last three games and 5.0 for the season, but Montas, he's no prize, 4.37 ERA and 4.60 over his last three starts. I think the Padres get to Montas. I like the chances of that happening. Going to take the Padres for the first five as our pick for this game. For our next game, let's go to Wrigley Field where the Cubs are closing out their series against the Atlanta Braves. We've got Ben Brown getting the start here for the Cubs and A.J. smith Shaver on the mound for the for the Braves. Last year when Shaver pitched in the majors, he was the youngest pitcher. He was the youngest player in all of baseball last year when he played. This year he comes in with some experience and this is the first action that we're seeing of him this year in the majors. He certainly had good stuff when we saw him last year. Brown for the Cubs, well, that indicates that this is going to be a bullpen game for the Chicago Cubs, as Brown usually goes just an inning or two in his starts. The thing is that the Cubs' bullpen over the last 10 games has been outstanding with a 2.19 ERA, but over the course of the season, they have a 4.15 ERA, and most of the time when we look at this, they haven't pitched too many bullpen games. To be honest, I believe the Braves roster is just better from top to bottom. And against that Cubs bullpen, look out. We're taking the Braves in the first five. And that's going to be our pick for this game. For our next game, we head to Oakland where the A's are hosting the Rockies. After playing extra innings on Wednesday, they return to the field for an afternoon battle um, in Oakland for this one. We've got Joey Estes on the mound for the A's, and it's Ryan Feltner on the mound for the Rockies. I can tell you right out of the gate without even digging into the numbers too deep, these are not two of the better pitchers in baseball. We've seen limited action from Estes, and he checks in with a 9.35 ERA for the season. And, of course, those are his numbers for his last three starts because we've only seen him in limited action. But when we look at Feltner... 5.69 5.69 ERA for the season, 6.89 over his last three games. We generally give Colorado pitchers the benefit of the doubt because they play at least half of their games, sometimes even more than that, at Coors Field. But when we look at the Rockies' bats over the last 10 games, hitting 267 versus right handed pitching to 237 for the A's, and that is consistent with the differential of the, over the course of the season, I think the Rockies get it done. And that'll be my pick for this game. For our next game, we go to Comerica Park, where the Tigers are hosting the Blue Jays for Game 1 of their series. Of course, the Tigers are turning home from Kansas City, while the Blue Jays are hitting the road after playing the White Sox. You know, Kevin Gosman gets the ball for the Jays. It's Jack Flaherty on the mound for the Tigers. Two pitchers with a lot to prove, as Gosman really having a horrible start to the season with a 4.89 ERA, and it balloons to 5.65 over his last three starts, while Flaherty kind of tossed for, you know, tossed out in the garbage, picked up by the Tigers, 3.79 ERA on the season, and a 3.38 through his last three starts. Gausman's just finding way too much of the plate and has really been getting tagged, while Flaherty has bailed himself out, having one of the better strikeout totals of any starter in all of baseball. Neither of these teams hit left-handed pitching at all, 162 for the Tigers versus 136 for the Jays over their last 10. But when you look at the way the Tigers hit right-handed pitching, 288 over the last 10, they're going to get to Gausman. I'm going to take the Tigers in this one. 
For the final game of today's card, we go to Chicago where the White Sox are hosting the Orioles as they begin their weekend series. It's Mike Clevenger on the bump for the White Sox and Grayson Rodriguez on the mound for the Orioles. Of course, Rodriguez, highly touted last year as, as a rookie, got ended up getting sent back to the minors. And when we saw him on his return, he was outstanding. For Clevenger, this guy's a veteran. And he seems to always be able to battle it out no matter what situation he's in. But he comes in with a 5.56 ERA, limited action this season, while Rodriguez has a... 3.15, but 3.94 over his last three games. The Baltimore Orioles just aren't hitting the baseball right now, hitting just 209 versus right-handed pitching over the last over the last 10 games, and 223 versus righties um, over uh, for the season. While the White Sox 219 for the season versus righties and 233 recently. The White Sox are playing better baseball. I like the White Sox at the big price, and that'll be our pick for this game. That wraps up today's first halves and first five innings. Of course, if you're looking for our best bets, the games we're betting today, head on over to PickDogs.com, click on the Premium Picks tab. You can see hottest cappers, leaderboards, and of course, all of the picks, uh, get all daily packages guaranteed, and all of the uh, picks 100% documented. Of course, if you're looking for cool Pick Dogs garb, like the hoodie that I'm wearing, Nike Zip Up fleece, or a... Uh, trucker hat like I'm wearing, and much, much more, go to the website, click on the merch tab, and check it all out. We'll see you tomorrow. We've got first halves and first five innings, of course, every single day here at Pick Dogs.